We're ready to go. Everybody, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm excited to start this topic. It's it basically is your retirement protected. And like we mentioned when we started, there's a lot of things that you don't know about protecting assets when it comes to retirement accounts. And Don said, you know, mentioned he's wanted to cover this topic for a long time. It is very, very important. It's kind of what most of us rely on for our future and for our retirement years. It's a big deal. We've worked a lot of years of our lives to build up a retirement account, real estate, qualified, non-qualified, whatever. But there's a lot of things that if you don't know you're doing wrong, you can mess it up. So this is this is fun. Uh, super excited about it. Uh, before we start, uh, just looking at some past webinars. I'll, a lot of you know this is archived in our YouTube channel. So YouTube slash Protect Wealth Academy. You can find all the details there. We have a lot of archives. There's hours and hours of quality education. Uh, would you say it's entertaining, Don? I mean, I'd say entertaining quality, both, right? <laughs> For us geeks, asset protection and tax geeks, it's very entertaining. <laughs> See, I think it is. I think it's I very entertaining. It might be no. really entertaining. <laughs> you get to get down to the tax code. Okay, maybe not that bad. But you know what? Actually, it's it, it really is true. It's entertaining and a lot of it is fun and informative. It's not like your average college class. You know, it really isn't. It's it's very much engaging. And relevant, it's it's relevant to you. That's the thing about college. I hated this. All the theory. This is application. This is real world application. So important stuff. Go find that on YouTube. From future webinars coming up, we got a good one coming up with John Evans, estate planning. Uh, that's a big one. Really important. One of the most important things you can do for your family and your future besides retirement. Don is setting up an estate plan for your family. Love that one. So watch for that one. And we always mention our three-day asset protection summit. This is our premier event that we do. This is bar none. I know we're biased. It is the best event out there on asset protection, tax planning, estate planning, building, and protecting your wealth. There's nothing better out there. Honestly, like I said, I know I'm biased, but the thing is we've been doing this 20 years plus teaching this course, this course. And there's nobody out there that does it better. We've got a lot of experience and the experts, the top experts that we know on these topics. You won't find better. Please join us. Uh, it's a free event coming up June 12th through 14th live stream. So there's no excuses. You can do it from your couch, from your office, from your car, from the park, from the beach, wherever you're at. Join us. Uh, also, July 17th through 19th. We'd love to have you. Uh, nothing better out there. And there's some, I love these, Don. These are really fun. I know uh, you and the team have spent a lot of time on this. Most of you, Don, I love these. These are tax tips. Anything you want to say on these tax tips, Don? We're posting them on social media, but you're, you're having a lot of fun with these. Oh, they are. They, they really are fun. And 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 some of them are a little quirky, but, um, but, but they're always relevant. Um, and I don't know, we've just had a lot of fun creating them with the team. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of fun. So look for those tax tips. It's worth it. Come on social media. We are jumping in on Facebook, Instagram. You know, we've got them all over uh, YouTube. Uh, so jump in. L love to have you on those. And the uh, we're, we're an asset protection company. We always do the disclaimers. So if you're looking for specific investment, tax, legal, financial advice, remember, that's not what we're here for. This is not specific tax or legal or financial advice, you need to seek out legal, competent legal financial attack professionals, okay? So uh, always do that, protect the assets. And Don, uh, is your retirement protected from lawsuits? So that's a great question. Uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about other assets, real estate, your business, your other investments, your investment real estate. Well, we know how to protect those and we protect them very well, but now, Retirement. Is your retirement protected? So, Don, I'm going to let you get started with that one. And uh, did you want to do Q&A at the end? Um, yeah, let, let's do that. Um, what screen are you seeing? Are you seeing the right one here? I, I think, think you so. need to swap presenter view. Yeah, so go up to that settings, display settings, and swap presenter view. That should okay. be 
There we go. Looks good. The P bank with the umbrella. Protect that. Good. Okay. good. All right. So first of all, um, the recording. Is this going to be available, Kendall? Yeah. So we'll post this on YouTube generally within 24 hours. Uh, so just watch for that. And you know, we'll send it out. If anyone who registers for our webinars, we'll get those automatically. They're kind of sent out, sent out 24 hours after the webinar. Okay. And Larry is asking, what is my formal training? Well, I got my, I, I graduated from kindergarten and no, I did. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not an attorney. I've got a bachelor's degree in business. I, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. Years, years ago, I was sued because I was running a recreation park. There was a drive-by shooting. A little 18-year-old girl, girl got hit in the head. I was personally sued because I should have jumped out in front of the bullet, um, and I didn't. And you know, how do you see that coming? And, and to come to find out, we hadn't done anything wrong. But it was three years of hell. It was three years of just... Um, it was a very difficult time. What, you, what, what do we do? Can we move? Can we quit the job? Can we go get another job? Can we move out of state? Can we buy a house? We had no idea. It was, it was the uncertainty that made it tough. Since then, I've been the vice president of legal and compliance um, for three or four different companies. Um, I've trained, I've written five textbooks, Larry, on, on asset protection. Um, attorneys are good at what they do. They're not always good at explaining things. And at Protect Wealth, we have kind of a unique ability of taking these complex legal structures and breaking them down. So, Larry, that's my background, but I'm not an attorney and I can't give legal advice, but I can teach general principles and we're pretty good at it. So I hope that makes sense to you. Let's let's talk about the subject at hand, and that is how we, we protect our retirement accounts and, and why this is so relevant. The first, the, the, um, the last book that we wrote, the Total Asset Protection Handbook, uh, it, it's, it's now on, on the 11th edition. And the first, I think, nine, we, we didn't even cover this topic. Um, but it's become so relevant lately. And because, in, at least in my mind, uh, the, the, the threats that happen to your retirement account um, from external sources, internal sources, um, I, I believe it's a, I believe it's a very, very relevant topic, and that's why we've added that. And I'm excited to teach this. So here we go. Let me give you kind of an overview of what we're going to try to cover tonight. We're going to break down the threats to your estate, both the internal threats and the external threats. We're going to talk about what federal laws protect your your retirement accounts and what state laws protect your retirement accounts, and, and, and some of the cracks that, that some retirement accounts fall through. Is yours covered by state, or is it covered by federal, or is it not protected? Or, and then I'm going to give you some personal protection tips. What can we do to make sure that your account, or retirement account, whatever that is, is always protected? So that's, that's what we're going to try to cover. And if we do proper planning, in most cases, we can protect your account from lawsuits. We can protect it from debt collectors, from judgment creditors, liens, levies, judgments, even bankruptcy and divorce to a certain extent. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through this as we go through. Um, that's kind of the, the overview of what we're going to try to to cover. So again, there's the legal disclaimer. Kendall already mentioned that. I can't give legal advice. We can teach general principles, but every state is a little different. And, and I'll, I'll even cover some of that. But I can't tell you in your case, here's exactly what you need to do. But we can give you the general guidelines. So here, what I'd like to do is really break down what are the threats and and I, I like the I like the pictures because they're very descriptive to me of external sources and and what what threats are there from external sources? We think about blood sucking attorneys, we think about lawsuits, but but what really are the threats? And then how do we keep from blowing it up from inside? And are there things that you can do wrong that that really hurt 
your your estate and and absolutely so so let's break these down from inside let's let's talk about that first um you could be doing things with disqualified persons and be or be doing prohibited transactions that would be self-dealing and commingling and maybe you've got pro, you're you're investing in prohibited um investments maybe there's an internal lawsuit that's created inside of that. For instance, if you got a piece of real estate in there um, and you're renting it out and there's a lawsuit, a slip and fall or a wrongful death or something, could it create from inside your, your legal bubble and blow that up? There are some things, and, and we're going to talk about all of those tonight. So again, this is kind of an overview. But there are some things that I really can't help you with. Mismanagement and abuse. And, you know, management fees. I, I want you to be aware that, you know, let, let's say you're with a broker that that's taking three and four and five percent out of your estate. And they never hide, they, they never fully disclose what those fees are. But those things can eat you alive. And poor investing, I, I you know, the, those things I can't really help you with. If, if you're a, not a good money manager or if you're investing in Ponzi schemes or whatever, those are what I consider to be the threats that can blow up an estate, not only an estate, but but an IRA from inside. Those, the, the, That's what I consider the threats. And there, there's probably more. And if you have any additional ones, I'd love to have you type those into the Q&A, but those, that's what I can, that's what I see. And then from outside sources, I consider external lawsuits. You personally get sued or your company gets sued. You get pulled into the, to a lawsuit. Um, you're driving a car and you're rear in somebody, or you're, you, you're accused of doing something wrong. Lawsuits are a, a, an external thwart, threat. Debt collectors, bankruptcies, liens, levies, judgments, and those things uh, are easy to protect yourself from. And then we can show you the tricks to, to do that. But then there's things like divorce and child support and alimony and criminal activity. You see the difference in color. There, there's only so much I can do to help you protect yourselves from those things. Um, but those are what I consider to be the outside um, threats. So let's break those down and let's talk internal first. Okay, so I've already mentioned them. And in, in other words, what we're trying to do is keep you from blowing it up from inside out. So with IRAs, there are some things that are prohibited. Um, with 401ks, because the company you're with is traditionally managing, there, there's very little that, that you can do to, to blow it up from inside. But IRAs are very different, especially checkbook IRAs. So let's break down what, is, what transactions are prohibited. Um, any, anytime you're using an IRA and you're, you're providing sweat equity, which is basically you can make decisions, but you pick up a hammer and you start swinging it and that's a prohibited transaction. Anytime you're adding value to the property, I'm mowing lawns, I'm fixing the fence, I'm fixing the gutter, I'm, I'm replacing the roof. Those things as, as noble as they might be and as, as money saving as they might be, once you start doing providing sweat equity, that will be a prohibited transaction. Um, commingling with personal funds, and I see that often. Where you know I've got I've got this, this piece of property inside of my IRA, and the property tax bill comes, and it's just easier it's just easier to pay it and be done. So what I'm doing is I'm commingling, or there's a repair, and I just go down to Home Depot. I'll just pay for that. Well, you can't do that. The IRA, the, the, the property is owned by the IRA and, and all transactions have to happen within the IRA. And we can't commingle retirement funds with non-retirement funds. That, though, that would be a prohibited transaction. And for with a disqualified 
in person. So let's, before we go any further in this list, we'll come back to the list, but let's ask what a disqualified person is. You would be prohibited from, and a little cute little chart here, um, and we're going to put you and your spouse in the middle. You cannot do transactions with you and your spouse or anybody. Okay. So first of all, that would be a disqualified person. And then any ascendants, parents, grandparents, and their spouses. Okay, so my dad got remarried. I can't do, can't do any transactions with parents, grandparents, and their spouses. And then any of your children your children, your grandchildren, and their spouses. So not just my son, I can't do, but I can't do with my daughter-in-law. Can't do transactions with them and children. And, and so uh, I'm trying to be very clear with that so that there's no room for misunderstanding. And then a corporation or an LLC or a partnership where you own 50% or more. And in fact, I've seen some things that would, you really should be 33 and a half, 33 and a third percent or less. So if you had 20% of a corporation, could you invest? Yes, but again, we're gonna be really, um, really careful about that. But, but those are the rules. Those are disqualified persons. I know a corporation is not really a person, but I get, but, but, Let's go back now to the list. Now that we've defined what a disqualified person is, you can't do these types of transactions with disqualified persons. I cannot lease or sell or exchange property with a disqualified person. I get this question in, in our customer service all the time. Can I, can I, I've got this piece of property and now I want to sell it to my IRA. No, you can't do that. Or my IRA, I want to I want to buy it for fair market value and and now take depreciation. Remember, I can't take depreciation deductions in an IRA, and I want the depreciation deductions. No, I can't. I can't sell or buy to to myself or to any other disqualified persons. I can't lend or borrow money or extend credit to a disqualified person. I can't use plan assets to secure a loan. I've got either a lot of stock in here, I've got equity in real estate, I can't use that to secure a personal loan. That would be a prohibited transaction. I can't compensate myself or any of my family members there that are disqualified. Um, you can't pay your son to mow the lawn on a rental property. You can't pay your, your corporation to, to accept management fees, can't do that. You see what we're doing? Living in the real estate owned by the plan, and I get that a lot of a lot of questions on that. Can can my IRA buy a property and then I move into it? No, that would be a prohibited transaction. I can't furnish goods and services or facilities. I can't take my own personal properties or my 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 furniture and put them in a in a rental property owned by my IRA. I, that would be a prohibited transaction. And I can't purchase private equity shares with, again, I've got a personal corporation and I'm using my IRA to purchase. No, that, that would be a prohibited transaction. There are certain investments that are also prohibited. The biggest one is collectibles. I cannot buy collectibles. That's any work of art. Stamps, coins, cars, baseball cards, alcohol, and in any alcohol, whether it's a pristine wine or any alcohol, gems, jewelry, rugs, and antiques. And the, the question comes up is to why? Well, at the end of every year, you have to report back to the IRA or to the IRS, or your custodian has to, here's the value of the assets inside of your IRA. And, and it's really hard to know what the, this baseball card is worth on January 31st every year, or what your alcoholic beverages or your rugs or your, your stamp collection or your vintage coins. Because of that, 
because of the valuation problem, the IRS has simply said, I'm sorry, collectibles are not an asset that you can buy inside of an IRA. So they prohibited that. Life insurance policies and products to prohibited persons. I can't buy a life insurance policy by have have it owned by the the IRA. So against qualified people. So crypto is not it is not on the list, is it? So yes, you can buy crypto inside of an IRA. Um, and then stock in an S corporation. I could have stock in it. C corporation, especially if I own less than a third of the corporation. Um, but yes, I can own stock in a C corp, but not in an S corporation. Okay. Should you should add federal government incompetence to the list? <laughs> Thank you, Sally. I appreciate that. Okay. Then there are some things, again, we're talking about how to keep from blowing it up from inside. There are some investments that create inherent risk. And the biggest one that, that I see more than anything else is real estate. If I have a piece of real estate inside of my IRA, could it potentially create risk? Yeah. If, if I've got a rental property or commercial property or whatever, and, it, and, and there's slip and fall inside of there. It could have blow up internally everything bubble, and the answer is, but not just that. And I, I believe that that is by far the biggest one. But then there are other things like joint ventures. Could a lawsuit create be created by a joint venture? If, if I mortgage, can I have debt inside of my array? Of course I could. Um, it's going to create some tax problems or tax complexities if I do that, but yes, I can. If I default on them, is everything inside of that IRA at risk? Of course it is. I, we, we generally strongly discourage you from running a business inside of IRAs, although I do see it. Only. So the, there are special rules that I, I don't want to get into tonight, but there are special rules if you're going to do 401ks or company pension plans, if you're going to try to run a business. But within IRAs, I would probably just stay really, really clear of third-party management fees. Um, again, if I'm if I'm hiring a broker that's taking more money than they should, or maybe, I don't know, can, can that hurt your retirement accounts? And again, poor investment and Ponzi schemes. Those are what I consider that, that create risk inside of your, your internal bubble inside of your IRA. So here are what I consider the threats, again, to your account. It's of, avoid prohibited transactions and avoid prohibited persons and avoid prohibited investments and beware of investments that create risk. And there are special rules that apply to real estate, and I'll go over those in just a couple minutes. Um, let's, is it best not to put anything inside of an IRA? Well, no, no, there's there a lot we can do inside of IRAs. And so, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, we, we put in things there that especially that don't create risk, or we manage the risk if you're going to own real estate. Let's talk about external threats and how to pr protect your retirement account from other people. All right. First of all, to know how to protect your account from external sources, we need to know if your, if your retirement account is protected by federal law. And that's a federal law called ERISA. We'll talk about that and give you some guidelines. Or is it protected by state law? And the state laws vary significantly. Federal law, hopefully your retirement account is protected by federal law because it's much, much stronger. But there's certainly some that, that aren't. Okay. What is ERISA, first of all? Well, it's a federal program 
created in 1976, the Employee Retirement Income Security Act. I don't know that anybody in my life has ever asked me that, but that's what it stands for. And what it does is it protects employer-funded retirement accounts. Notice that really carefully worded, it's employer-funded retirement accounts. It doesn't mean that the employer has to have contributed all the funds but it was created by the employer, managed by them, and, and they controlled some of the investments or your investment options. It was created by them, but it was for your retirement. There are two specific reasons or, or two specific clauses inside of the ERISA rules that will protect your account. And here, here are the rules. There's an exclusive purpose rule and inside of the, the, the ERISA statutes, it says that these trust funds, and keep in mind that a, that a 401k, all of these retire, retirement plans are trusts. An IRA is a trust. We don't call it a trust, but there's a beneficiary. There, it falls under trust rules, a 401k, a 403b. Uh, these are all trusts, various forms of trusts. So, Trust forms are not to be diverted for purposes other than the exclusive benefit of the employee or employees. And that's very clear right there in the statutes. Now, there might be little ways that, that uh, attorneys, plaintiffs, attorneys are going to try to get around this, but that's the rule. And it's actually pretty strong and, and it's been held up lots and lots of times. Um, so that's the federal law. The other rule is this, it's an anti-alienation rule, and it specifically says funds may not be assigned, alienated, or subject to attachments, garnishments, levies, execution, or legal, or equitable process. So right there in their statutes, they're, they're saying, you can't garnish this. You can't attach to this. You can't place liens and levies against the funds that are inside of an ERISA-protected plan. Well, that's really good. And it's really strong. And I'll, I'll show you. But in order for your plan to qualify, the fiduciary, whoever that is, has to meet some qualifications. They have to act in the sole in interest of the participants. They have to exercise prudence in settling suitable investments, in selecting them, and, it, and they have to give you various options. They have to, they have to, all the plan participants have to have various options. They can't just pick one investment and say, here you go. They have to give you a, not necessarily a wide variety of invest, investments, but they have to give you some investment options. Um, they have to follow all the plan documents and they have to ensure their expenses are reasonable and avoid conflicts of interest. Now, ERISA was put into place to protect you, to protect us Americans who are trying to create a retirement account from plan administrators that were not fully disclosing everything that they needed to. They were doing self-interesting things. Um, they, they weren't discussing, they, they weren't disclosing their fees. They weren't disclosing so many things. And, and that, that was the main reason ERISA was put into place. Again, was to protect you from the administrators, but also to protect your account from outside sources. But for your plan to continue to qualify under a risk of protection, obligation on the and the administrator, whoever that is, the custodian, to meet these qualifications. If they are a fault of that, Emron officials or whoever is administering the pension, if they're if they're not meeting guidelines, you lose ERISA protection. And, but remember, and I know we talk about this a lot, the OJ Simpson case where he sort of sued his wife, but sort of didn't, wife, but, you know, the, he's innocent in criminal court, but civil court. Remember the Goldman 
family, him, and got a 33 judgment against him. What was protected was his Florida home and he was reportedly taking $23,000, $25,000 a month out of his NFL pension plan. And the best attorney didn't touch that money because it was ERISA protected. And NFL followed the, the ERISA guidelines. So did their administrator, their custodians. And so the plans were protected. And so it's protected from domestic lawsuits, garnishments, liens, and levies. That's really good. We like that. There are some funky little rules with personal bankruptcy. And generally, your ERISA protected plan is protected up to a million dollars. There could be some stipulations if you just put a lot, a lot of money in there before, you know, within three months, 90 days of, you know, a garnishment, a lien, a levy. But generally, um, and, and personal bankruptcy, you're usually limited to about a million dollars, even in an ERISA protected plan. So there's some, again, some some odd rules when it comes to bankruptcy. And then, but the, the, the idea for, for ERISA was really to protect you from mismanagement and abuse because they have to disclose everything to the plan participants and to the federal government. Non-disclosure of fees, nope, they have to disclose the fees that they're doing, again, to you and to the federal government. And they, they can't just give you a, a, a narrow variety of investments. And so from so this is what it's protecting you from. And, and it, not just domestic lawsuits, but you're also protected in some degree from the plan administrators. Okay, so that's what ERISA will protect you from. Here's what, here's the, here's the ERISA protected plans. They would be things like pension plans or 401ks or profit sharing plans, um, employer SEP plans. Not, not if it's employer, employer owned only. Um, if, if it's just the, um, the, the owners of the company, eh, it's not, but, it, but if it's created for the employees, then your, then your SEP plan, your simple plan would be protected. Deferred comp plans, welfare plans, um, deferred. Okay, so you can read what's on the board. Um, health savings accounts, if they were created by the employer and, and, and funded by them. Even if you contributed some money, all of these plans, if you contributed some money, that's okay. But the critical thing is they were created and funded initially by the employer. Then that means they're covered by ERISA. That's good. That's a that's a qualifying rule is that it needs to be employer funded. OK, now I want you to pay attention really closely to this next slide because it's even more important. And that is here are the plans that are not protected by ERISA. That would be individual retirement accounts. That would be military thrift, the TSP plans. Are you kidding me? We we don't have a federal law that protect our military savings accounts. Nope, we do not. Sorry, I, it, that that is a slap in the face to people that, that served in the military. But ERISA does not cover those plans because they were created and funded by the employer, the federal government, the military, the army, the navy, whatever. They were created by you. It was your plan. They encouraged you to do it, but there's no ERISA protection. And then state plans, of course, there's no, not, not, no, not federal protection. There might be state protection, but right now we're only talking federal protection. Um, KEOs, which would be self-employed plans, school nonprofit plans. Most church plans are not federally protected. Owner-only SEP plans. So Protect Wealth, Kendall and I are the, the owners of that. If we set up a plan just for ourselves, then there's no federal, there's, there's no protection. If we include the employees in there, then there's protection. Remember that the critical thing is who set up the plan. Was it the employer or was it individually? If it was created and solely funded by an individual, 
It is not protected by ERISA. Okay, so, <laughs> and, 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 and there are various rules and some of them kind of fall into some gray areas. And so as all I can do is give you a general, general guideline, is your particular plan covered by ERISA? And the answer to go back to, was it created by the employer or was it created by and funded by you? That will tell you whether it's ERISA protected or not. And that's, again, that's a general guideline. It's not always 100% accurate, accurate, but it's as close of, of a guideline as I can get. Here are some things that ERISA will not protect your account from. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. And that is divorce. And I've had so many hundreds of questions on a hotline for 24, 25 years, whatever. Um, okay. And I and I get gentlemen call um, or, or men who aren't gentlemen call and say, okay, I'm considering divorce. Now, my wife never contributed to my 401k. Uh, she stayed home and, and watched kids, but but this is my plan. Well, let me be honest, the judge is not likely to see it that way. He's going to see it as it was a partnership. She stayed home with the kids. You agreed to that. And and your 401k is, is probably going to be split upon divorce. Or they're going to give K, but then they're going to give her some other assets. But but divorce is split marital assets. Assets that were acquired during the marriage. Generally, the the goal is to split those 50-50, Include federal ERISA protected plans. It's not going to protect you from qualified domestic relations orders, which is child support and alimony obligations. It's not going to protect you from bankruptcy over a million dollars. It's not going to protect you from on federal fines and federal penalties and IRS debts. So if you owe the IRS, you can't you can't owe the IRS lots of money. You never paid taxes ten years and expect that your IRS your protected plan will receive federal protection. It's probably not going to happen that way. Federal law will you're you're asking the federal government to protect your plan and yet you're not paying your fines and penalties and and see there's a little conflict flicked of interest and no it won't protect you from that it won't always protect you from fraud and criminal activities and when i say always it does and sometimes it doesn't so the, the the rule of thumb in my mind is don't commit fraud and don't commit criminal activity and then you i, I don't know how to be more clear on that and then funds distributed from your account, let's say I pull money out of my 401k or my pension plan, and then have I lost the ERISA protection on that? To some degree you have. You remember I told you that um, OJ was taking $23,000, $25,000 out. And, 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 and if he were taking that out and accumulating that in his own savings account, the fact that he was spending it right away made it very safe from judgment creditors because it's not it's it's not garnishable um however had he started commingling that with other savings accounts and other activities then it probably would be so funds distributed from the account i'm going to put that kind of in a gray area and say it it sort of depends okay so things you can do to protect your ERISA plan First of all, it is verify your administrator, whoever that is, um, maintains ERISA standards. And that's an easy thing to do because every year you're going to get a statement and, and, and it will tell you whether they continue to be ERISA protected. And if not, I would, I would twist some screw, screws on your employer to make sure that they're your, your plans, because the employer hires the custodian and there is an obligation for custodians to make sure that they maintain standards. Carefully consider rollovers from non-ERISA protected plans. So let's say I've worked for the company for 25 years and now I'm gonna retire. And I, now I, I take my plan and roll it over into an IRA. 
have I lost federal protection? I'm going to talk about that in just a minute because it's very likely that you you do. Well, I'll show you how to get around that. But but be careful. Carefully consider rollovers because if I'm going from a federal ERISA protected plan to a state something without with only state protection, and again state laws will vary greatly, and I'll show you some some examples of that. Things you can do to protect your your ERISA plan is settle and or pay your your federal taxes. Uh, do an offer and if you owe back taxes, do an offer and compromise. Do whatever you need to do. Pay your taxes, get them caught up. Um, but you, again, you can't expect your retirement account to be protected by the federal government if you owe the federal government money. So settle, negotiate what you need to do. Fulfill your child support, your out your alimony obligations. Uh, I know that that sounds really basic, um, but do your part and be a good citizen and, and fulfill that. Considered married file it separate, filing separate returns. And, and, and this I see a lot on a second marriage. Let's say you're considering marrying a person that you know has, has IRS debt. Could I continue? And I, I probably would not commingle joint assets with them. I, I would probably file separate tax returns, even though I'm married. I, I, I don't want his debts um, interfering with making, make putting my plan at risk. And so I, I would probably consider keeping bank accounts and tax returns separate in that case. And then, as simple as it sounds, sometimes working on your marriage and hiring a th therapist is is easier than than losing your retirement account, losing fifty percent to a divorce. Um, I, I and again, I know that this sounds simplistic, and 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 sometimes it's just not. I I get that. Um, and sometimes divorce is the answer. I get that too. Um, but sometimes th 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 those are what I consider what we can do to protect even ERISA protected plans. Okay. Now, now we're switching from, oh, look at the headers. I'm from federal protection. Now we're talking about state plan, state protections. State plans will also not protect you from divorce and child support, alimony obligations, federal bankruptcy, federal fines. Now we're now let's talk about an IRA not federally protected. All of the things that weren't protected under ERISA, and now we add all of those things apply, and we now add and federal liens and federal levies because the federal government can supersede your state law. They have, and we call it overreach, but sometimes that's just the way it is. Federal government can come in and, and supersede it. Not always, but often, and not always will they, but often they will, and sometimes they can. If federal laws supersede state laws, your IRA, so don't tick off the federal government. It's the best advice I can give you. Let me give you some of the funky rules. I told you that state laws vary greatly on, on, on protection for our non-ERISA protected plan. Again, this would be like military thrift plans, IRAs, and the, the ones that I showed you. Let me give you some of the to be funky rules. I like the I'll just kind of looking at it. Protection is limited to your necessary support in for Your, and you did damage, you put somebody in the hospital. And so we're going to go, you know what? We're giving the judge tremendous lead to say, uh, that's a little more for retirement. So we're going to take that out of your IRA and we're going to give it to the judgment creditor. Are you kidding me? It's sort of the way it is, it is. Okay, I'm having a 
Okay. Net criminal activity, fraudulent activities, specifically stated in those four states. Colorado has a funky rule that if you commit murder, your IRA is not protected. That's not word for word what it says, but that's basically it. I, I, I probably wouldn't you know, test that in any state, specifically by state law, Idaho, Maine, or Massachusetts, Missouri, are, are specifically say criminal activity won't protect your IRAs, your, your, your plans. There are some states that will protect, I think there's eight of them, two, four, six, eight, that will protect traditional IRAs, but not Roth IRAs. That doesn't make a bit of sense to me. I, I, I don't understand why, but those are the, the funky rules in your state. Inherited IRAs are not protected fully in certain states. Um, Texas usually has a really good law, a really good protection on homesteads, on, on automobiles. You can't take your guns away. You can't take your protected, your, your IRAs away, except for inherited IRAs, and those are not fully protected. SEPs and simple plans are not protected in four states. Don't understand that. But those of you with, again, they're, they're, I'd love to hear some explanations. I don't understand those being from an outsider. Contributions in Pennsylvania, over $15,000 are not protected. So uh, the, the rules right now, the contribution rules, I could put up to $66,000 into my SEP plan, but any contributions over $15,000 in Pennsylvania are not protected. Why is that? I don't know. Protection is limited to a million dollars in a few states. And Minnesota, look at that funky little rule. Protection is protect is is limited to sixty nine thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? Is that archaic? That is not going to be much of a retirement account. And so, um, and then there are some look back rules in various states on contributions. So in Hawaii, they've got any contributions you made within the last three years would not be protected. These are some of the. These are not all of the funky little rules, but but yeah. Uh, my point for listing these is to say um, you need to be aware of your state rules and, and you can pull up these in, in, in a Google search, pull up your state statutes and what, what your IRA, what IRAs protections exist. You're not going to find it under ERISA because IRAs are not protected by ERISA, but your state rules and, and, and again, I don't know anybody that's out there teaching this, but if I lived in Minnesota or if I lived in a state that doesn't protect a Roth IRA, I might even either be talking to my state legislature or consider moving when I retire. You need to be aware of your state rules, okay? And again, state rules change. And my little note down here is state statutes are constantly changing. Be aware of them. And do what you can do to, to protect your accounts. Now, based on my personal research and everything that we've done here at Protect Wealth, the, here are the 13 states that I believe provide the strongest asset protection. And you notice Texas is listed, even though they don't protect inherited IRAs. Okay, I get that. But besides that, and the ones that are bolded, Arizona, Texas, Washington, I believe after reading state statutes for the last few months, I believe that those have some of the strongest asset protection for IRAs. So do with that what you want. That that's There's no legal opinion on this. This is based on my personal research, but I hope that that's helpful for you. And then again, what happens Look at our little illustration on the board. What if I've got a 401k or an ERISA protected plan and now I'm ready to leave the company or I'm ready to retire and I want to roll this into something that's not federally protected? What rules apply and, and how do real rollovers work? IRAs that were, were created from funds rolled from ERISA protected plans 
can keep their ERISA protection as long as I don't commingle funds. So I've got a 401k. It's got $600,000 in it. I roll that into a IRA. As long as I don't continue to add money to that, then I can invest in real estate. As long as I, if, if I combine that with another IRA or or if I can if I start contributing to that, then I've lost the ERISA protection. But as long as I've kept that that six hundred thousand dollars, it can grow. It can do what you can invest. But I would probably always keep ERISA protected plans separate than other IRA plans. You can roll it through an IRA. I, I know that this is confusing, but. Read the, the screen. I, let me go over it again. IRAs that were, were created from funds rolled from an ERISA protected plan can keep their ERISA protection if the account holder does not commingle non ERISA funds in the same account. I don't know why that exists, but it does. And so, based on again all the research that I've done and the experts that I've talked to, ERISA protection can carry on even to IRAs as long as it started with an ERISA plan. Is that, is that, I don't know. There, there we go. So what can we do to protect our, and then we're going to wrap this up. How are we doing on time? Okay. And then I'm going to cover this and then we're going to answer some questions. Things that you do to protect even IRA accounts? Because we talked about how to risk plans. What can we do to protect our IRA? Well, first of all, I would use a custodian transactions. If you're going to self-direct real estate, especially real estate or any, you know, other, I like having a custodian review. Do not like, I personally don't like checkbook IRAs. I've seen way too much abuse. This is where your IRA owns a LLC and you're the manager of the LLC. And now you've got a checkbook and you do whatever you want inside of that. I've seen too many abuses. Um, my my brother-in-law, I hope he's not listening, is the for how to do a checkbook IRA wrong. He pays his son of the lawn and he takes a little bit of money out when he's a little short. And, you know, he takes a management fee and he anything that you can, he swings a hammer and he fixes things and anything that you do wrong, he much does as it does it. If he had had a cut and, and he believes because he's got a, that there, yes, there is a custodian, but the custodian doesn't look at, at all the transactions. If he had somebody upside the head years ago and said that that is a prohibited transaction, you can't do that. I like having, even though it might take 24 hours for somebody to, to review the transaction, it keeps me safe. I like that. If you have real estate, I'd like you to carry adequate liability insurance on that, that property. I want you to separate safe assets from, from real estate assets. And I want you to use multiple IRAs or single member LLCs if possible. Let me illustrate three and four, the very best way I know how. Let's say I've got my million dollar IRA. It's all invested in safe assets, cash and brokerage accounts and precious metals and individual stocks. Your hundred shares of, of General Electric or Home Depot stock are not going to run down the street cause an accident. There's no liability. They're all safe assets. They don't create any liability. But what happens if I now introduce and I purchase a piece of real estate inside of that otherwise safe bubble? What have you just done? Oh my gosh, you've introduced risk into that otherwise safe bubble. I would never, ever encourage you to do that. What I would encourage you to do is if you're going to buy real estate, that's fine. If it's a good investment for you, set up a separate IRA. Can you have Two IRAs, or you can have as many as you want, but one is for safe assets and one is for real estate. And now I go along and buy another real estate. Could I use multiple IRAs? Oh, yeah. You can have as many IRAs as you want. And, and what you would be doing is separating each property or groups of properties from each other. But safe assets 
separated from real estate and the real estate separated from each other by using multiple IRAs. Now, you might look at this and go, well, that's a lot of custodial fees. Well, that's entirely possible. So then what we may do is we might use single member LLCs that are solely owned by the IRA. And again, we're separating the real estate from each other using single member LLCs. Who is the member? Well, the, the IRA is. Who's the owner of that? Well, the IRA is a solely owned is a solely owned subsidiary of the IRA. And you see what we're doing. You can add as many of these around the board as you want, as have as many single member LLCs. And again, we're separating each property or groups of properties from each other. And we're separating the safe assets from the real estate. I hope that makes sense. And that's the best way I know how to illustrate it. So three and four, we're isolating safe assets from real estate. And four was use multiple IRAs or single member LLCs. What else can you do to protect your IRA? Settle and negotiate your tax debt because again, federal laws and state laws, if you're not paying your state taxes, you lose your state protection, don't you? Pay off your personal and business debts because again, we're dealing with an IRA and state laws are, they can come against you. Fulfill your child support, your obligations to alimony, work on your marriage, because are IRAs protected from divorce? Of course not. And so work on your marriage. And sometimes we use prenuptial and postnuptial agreements. Sometimes we lobby our legislature for better state statutes, Minnesota. I, I, if, if your Roth is not protected, I would be asking your legislate, legislator, why not? Why do you protect a traditional but not a Roth? And what if, what, whatever your state laws, wherever their weaknesses is, I would be lobbying for that. And if, and if absolutely necessary, you might consider moving to a different state. As, as, as tough as that is, life is full of trade-offs, isn't it? But when it comes to my retirement account and making sure that I have enough to support myself and my spouse and maybe my kids, these are important decisions that really, I hope you feel my heart on this. I'm, uh, I'm not suggesting everybody move around and shuffle, but, but work with, just be aware of what you're, you're facing. Thank you for the, your little hearts. Um, this is sort of what we do. Uh, uh, if this is your very fr first taste to Protect Wealth Academy, we're, we, and I hope this has been helpful um, in how to protect retirement accounts. Um, let's, let's go to some of the questions. Kendall, what do we, what, what, what do we have that we, that we missed? Uh, you covered a lot of these, but uh, let's go through a few of them. So uh, a lot of them ask, what about what types of plans are protected? And you covered those. Like what types of plans, Roths, traditionals, 401ks, you know? Yeah, let, let me go back to those those so that we, we're really clear on what's protected and what's not protected. So here's your ERISA protected plans. And again, I, I think the predominant, there we go, is that? Yeah. Oh, it switched on you, it looks like. There we yeah, go. Okay. Okay, so that 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 spells it out pretty good there, I love it. I'm, I'm just gonna, uh, this is awkward, but, um, I'm going to keep it right there. And I know you can, uh, I think you can see it. You can see what's coming. What's coming. Um, here are the plans not covered by ERISA. Here are the ones that are protected by ERISA. If you remember the main difference was funded initially by the, the, the company or was it created and funded initially by you? Does that answer a few? That answered a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, what about life insurance? Why is that not protected? Good question, but I can, can see some abuse to it. I don't know answers a hundred percent, but I can see my, my IRA, I've got some money and all of a sudden I use that money to take out a big life insurance policy, my wife and th- then, you know, she gets sick and now my IRA has a lot more money and I, I can see abuse that, that could take place. Um, so I, I don't know the answer um, other than, wow, it wouldn't take a lot of creativity to see, you know, how, how it could be abused. Okay. What about uh, non-military TSPs? Um. Go back to the rule. If it, was it created and funded by you individually, then it won't be protected. <laughs> Good. All right. That answered a lot of questions there. Great. Okay. Uh, what about real estate investment trusts or REITs? Um, those could be, that's not prohibited. It wasn't on the list of, of prohibited, um, you know, prohibited investments, was it? Where's our list? Same as multifamily syndications. I think those are kind of similar. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very similar. Okay. All right. Covered a lot of those. Looks like good. You answered a ton of those. All right. Um, Okay. What about if you roll over? We covered covered some of this. If you roll over a 401k from a different employer to a single IRA, is that considered commingling? Or do you have to separate separate rollover IRAs from each former employer? No, you you can roll. Okay, you can roll IRA money. Let's say husband and wife each have IRAs, and now you create what's called a corporate pension plan or a corporate four hundred one k. Can you roll both of those into one? Now it's created and funded by the corporation, even if you're you own the corporation. But now there's there's some federal ERISA laws that will protect that. So yes, you can roll money from IRAs. Sometimes if you're if you're joining a new company, and and the company is going to have some some problems with you rolling your IRA into their corporate funds, and so, but that. I've seen it done, but the companies are going to have problems. Where, where, where I see it being rolled over um, is, is when somebody quits their 401k and now wants to self-direct it into an IRA. And, and, and it's, it, it, we roll that money or we transfer the funds over. And let's, let's go back to one. Maybe this will help to... If I showed them, okay. If I showed this screen, could I? Could I? It's it's not considered a rollover if I if I'm using money from my cash. Oh, let's use this one. Okay, I I, I need money out of my cash to buy another investment. That I'm simply transferring from my safe asset um, to my real estate um, IRA. I'm simply transferring. That's not a rollover. It, it's a it's it's a transfer, and and I'm starting to build up way too much money over in my real estate. Can I transfer the money back over to my stock account? Yes, those are transfers, and those are done all the time. Okay, and this kind of applies. So Valerie asks about if you if the Roth IRA was set up in California and you move to a different state. Say California is not protected, but you move to a different state. Is it where you set it up or is it where you live, where the protection applies? It's where you live. It's not where you set up. It's where you live. Thankfully. Okay, great. All right. And excuse me. Uh, Okay. If I live in a state that exempts IRAs from creditors and my creditor forced me into voluntary bankruptcy, am I covered by the 1 million federal bankruptcy rule or is my multi-million IRA completely exempt from bankruptcy? Um. ERISA will protect IRAs. It's the only the, the only time that it will, and that is federal bankruptcy. Remember, there is no state bankruptcy. There's only federal bankruptcy. And so if I have an IRA, it is protected, even though it's an IRA, and I said there's no ERISA protection. Eh, it's not. It, it, 
there's bankrupt federal bankruptcy rules would would pr protect even my IRA up to about a million dollars. Did that answer that? Yeah, okay, that's great. I hope so. Does ERISA protect personal injury settlements from like a health insurance company that provided that settlement? Yes, yes. And again, look back at the O.J. Simpson case and, and it protect, personal injury. Yep. Yeah, but even from within the company, they shouldn't be able to attach to that and, and go back to the why ERISA was set up and look at look at those two basic rules that I gave you. Um, ERISA, where is that? There you go. Look at this chart. The, the, the purpose of ERISA is trust funds are not to be diverted for any other purposes. They can't be assigned, alienated, attached, garnished. Look at those rules, and, and that the, that's the rule of the law. Even by the, the, the custodian or the company that set it up, I think they, they would have a very hard time getting access to that. That that retirement account was set up for your your benefit. And again, there might be some rules about what you contributed within the last 90 days or something. There might be 120 days, something. But generally, that your ERISA-protected plan will be protected, even from the company and the custodian. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, and if you're asking that, you know, how do we get in touch? You know, what do we, what do you suggest I do? Cause you know, consulting with you guys, Don's hard to get a hold of. That's the honest truth. He's busy. And so it's sometimes he can, sometimes he can't, but we always recommend, uh, I'll put this in the link right uh, in the chat screen right now. Um, sign up for a free asset protection summit. We have Anderson attorneys, different advisors, tax advisors, uh, and Don on there to answer questions. Don teaches. So that's really what we suggest you do. I mean, am I covering everything there, Don? I think this covers the most of that. Yes. And Valerie, can we have more than one IRA? And yes, again, I think we covered in the one, you can have as many IRAs as you, you want to have. You know there's going to be a custodial fee for almost everyone. Be careful on that. In some states, um, you might be better off having more LLCs. Uh, would I do this, this in, with an $800 filing fee per L? No, I wouldn't. I In California or Massachusetts, $500 a pop every year, I would not do that. I would have more IRAs. So um, individual, look at what you're doing. Um, and, and, and as long as you're keeping it in safe assets, you might have one IRA for Roth, and one for traditional. That's a, that's okay. You can do that. Yep. So, and Valerie then follows up, what about a Roth? Yeah, so you can have multiple different type of Roth for one ks that sort of thing, right? Yeah, and then so let me go back to what I said here about transferring. Okay, so let me go back to this. We were talking, whoops, not that one. Well, now I really messed it up here. <laughs> Yeah, you've all seen my all my slides. So I, I talked I talked about transferring money from safe assets to my real estate and back and forth. That's okay as long as both of them are traditionals or both of them are Roths. But you can't you can't move money back and forth from a traditional to a Roth or a Roth to a traditional. So so keep in mind there. But but if both of these are traditionals, I can move money back and forth. If both of these are Roths, I can move money back and forth. I just yeah. I, yeah I, so Amir, Amir asks, how can you protect your Roth IRA in Texas when there's no protection? If it owns LLCs, does that give it a layer of protection? You kind of just showed that here. I think that gives you that layer of protection. Well, okay. So let's talk about specifically. If I get sued from outside sources, is my safe asset IRA protected? Look at your state laws and, and some of the funky little rules. In most states, your IRAs are protected up to about a million dollars, with the exception of the funky rules that I showed you. Uh, is this one, the, the, your real estate, is it protected from outside lawsuits? Yes, it is. Again, state rules apply, and most states do a pretty good job protecting you from outside lawsuits. But this property in single member LLC, 
single member LLC number one, could there be a lawsuit inside inside of the bubble, inside a single member LLC that hopefully you manage the equity, hopefully you've got good insurance, hopefully you've got a good management company, but worst case scenario, could you lose the property in single member LLC number one? Yes, you could. But what we don't want it to do is we don't want it to domino your whole IRA and take everything out. It's again, so we're separating the safe from the unsafe and we're taking real estate and we're separating those from each other, either by using multiple IRAs or from using single member LLCs within the IRA. And does every, if I have 20 properties, do I need 20 IRAs? No. Uh, it, it's based on your tolerance for risk, um, the size of your estate. If I've got a $20 million estate, I might group in bigger groups than, than if I were just starting out and I had three properties. So, so it's relative to the size of your estate and how much equity we have in each property. And, and I don't know, but I look at it's, let some common sense prevail on this as well. So JC, relating to this, Don, he says, can we put our brokerage account inside our brokerage account IRA inside of an LLC? Yes, but I don't see a reason why. Okay, so single member LLC number one over here. You, can you see my mouse, Kendall? Yeah. When I'm doing this, okay. Yeah. Would I put a brokerage account inside of that? Oh, yeah, but I don't see a reason to. A brokerage account can be right inside of your IRA. Um, you're always going to want some bank account or something, or the, the IRA custodian. You've got to have money to over here in the IRA to be able to transfer money when I need to. It collects money. It pays the property taxes, pays for repairs. It receives rent. Okay, you, you've got to have some way of doing that. But over here, do I, I, I don't see any reason at all to have, um, to contain the risk in a single member LLC within the IRA. I, you could do it. There's nothing that would prohibit you from doing it. I just think it's redundant. Yeah, overkill. All right. Okay, so a few people ask questions about, uh, actually three here have asked questions about annuities. Where does annuity fit? And can you roll over annuities into retirement plans? How does that fit in? Okay, remember one, one of the prohibited assets you can't have is um, life insurance and life insurance products. Remember we talked about that and generally annuities are a life insurance product. And so generally, I, I don't know on this one. Let me, let me be clear. Um, could we have annuities in an IRA? Uh, mm, yeah, I think actually you can, even though it is a product. I don't know where the rules apply on that. But uh, that would be a good question for Jill Banner or for Derek Long. And can we put annuities in there? I believe they probably could. It's not tied, as long as it's not tied to the death of somebody who is a prohibited person. Yeah, I have a few people asking about administrators, uh, you know, some good recommendations. You mentioned Jill Banner with iPlan, and that's iPlan Group. Uh, they're great. We know Jill for a couple of decades now almost. And then Derek Long with Quest Trust. Two great individuals. Derek uh, actually goes to Congress and works at a Congress level on this. Brilliant. So if you have specific, very detailed questions about it, I'd say go to one of those two. Wouldn't you, Dom? I absolutely, a absolutely. They're, they're both experts. We're we're teaching general concepts, but we're teaching things that how to protect your your accounts from lawsuits. This is something that they generally don't teach but you can do inside of it can you have an annuity and and, and that question for them yeah, real estate and tax liens and tax deeds and you know you, you, they deal can you read puppies inside of your IRA that's, that's a good question for them yeah and there's a few of you answering questions about annuities yeah there's annuity IRAs that sort of thing but the specifics to that talk to Derek or Jill but thanks for that answer there.
All right. Can you lend money to borrowers in real estate transactions from your Roth IRA? Is that a prohibited transaction? Say that again. I'm sorry. Sorry. I went faster. Can you lend money to borrowers, borrowers in real estate transactions from your Roth IRA? Is that a prohibited transaction? Absolutely. Can you do hard money loans is what you're saying, right? Basically, yeah. Absolutely. People do that all the time. Yes, you can use a Roth traditional and do hard money loans. Okay. Did I hear clearly that IRA an IRA account can collect rent? If I'm doing an REL, can it pay out mortgage or employees working in the REL? Yes. It, it just not to prohibit people. But again, be careful and 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 that we don't want to run a business inside of an IRA. And so if you're having employees, that that constitutes, I believe, uh you you're kind of crossing a line and you, you, now you're running a business. And that I don't want to I, I don't want to run a business in an IRA. I, I could I pay if I've got okay, I've got a piece of real estate over here. Could I pay for um maintenance yeah and, and and contractors to come in on the property and landscapers and plumbers and yeah absolutely do i want to pay employees and call them employee i think uh, i would shy away from that so valerie followed up with that and said can you pay family members you know not you know family members things like that are, pro are prohibited not if they're prohibited I can pay my brother. He's not prohibited. He's not up and down the chain. I pay my brother's wife. I can pay my nephews and nieces. They're not, they're not prohibited people. The people that were prohibited, you remember, were up and down. Those are your prohibited people. But that doesn't include your brother. There you go. It's just ascendants and descendants and a corporation that you own and yourself and your spouse. And what states are best? for protecting IRAs again. Okay, let me go back to, again, this is based on my personal research. Remember all the funky little rules that we that existed? Uh, you know, gotta stay away from those, but those were, this is my list of, based on my research that, that are the states with the very best IRA protection. That means you would have to live there. You don't move your account there. That is, is, it's irrelevant where the account is. It's where your personal resident, where do you, where do you preside? Where do you stay at night? Um, does that, because Arizona, Texas, and Washington, I believe have the very best, do I want to live in Arizona? Well, not in the summertime. I don't. I'm sorry. And do I, I, are you, so life is full of trade offs. Just I, I wouldn't move necessarily for for this reason only. Um, find out where your spouse wants to live and where, where you where your job is and so many other things. So many other things. Okay. JC says his mind's blown by the concept that if the 401k is rolled over into an IRA and you don't add any more outside money, that money's still protected by ERISA. How do you Isn't how do you how do you prove that? How can you verify that? Well, that, that's you know, we've done research on that, JC, for a long time. That's pretty common knowledge among most providers. I, I don't know. You, you probably just find an ERISA statutes on that, right, Don? Yes. Do your own research, but that's based on the research that I found, and I found that multiple times yeah that's pretty common all right Tim, when, when in Arisa, Valor, not california thank <laughs> you <laughs> when an arisa protected 401k is rolled into an ira after retiring from the company that's still protected i think that doesn't matter right say if you're so, rolling from an ira to it so when an arisa protected 401k is rolled into an ira after retiring from the company, is that still protected? I don't think that matters. Yes, yes. whether it's before or after, as long as we don't add additional funds to it. So you can have another one where I'm, I'm continuing to contribute to that one, but leave this one alone and let it invest in whatever is good for you and whatever, I don't, but, but I wouldn't co-mingle ERISA, um, uh, an IRA funded 
with ERISA with another one. So we talked about, can you have multiple IRAs, some for real estate and some for safe assets? And what, maybe what I should have shown is let's leave the ERISA 401k dumped in. Let's leave that alone and don't co-mingle with other IRAs. I think that maybe I'll add that diagram as well. So good, uh, JB good. has a question here, says basically he got a, he ended up having to uh, get a secure credit card so that the cre credit card companies couldn't come after him at one point. I get that, that it happens sometimes. At what point and how much money do you recommend to get an IRA to divert taxes when doing, when doing to eventually use the IRA to invest in an RAL? You get that okay, Don? Oh, yeah. You know what? It's a complicated question and it depends on so many things. Um, if you're if you're looking at an RAL, and I and I love I love the idea of this. Let me pull this up. But 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 keep in mind, let's go to this diagram. An RAL is going to be a separate corporation or an LLC tax as a corporation off to the side. And if I've got enough money in an IRA to buy the property, I might lease that to the RAL business. But what I would never do, uh, and and maybe I've got money, maybe there's two IRAs that partner and, and they own it, or maybe there's three or four. I don't care. Could I could a my IRA partner with my own funds? What I would never do is run the RAL business out of an IRA. For the real estate, great idea. And let's say my IRA owns um, 100%. Well, all of that, all of the rent money goes into this. Is that prohibited transaction? No, it's just leasing to my IRL business. Um, I, I had a lady when I was down um, with Gene Greeno's group. Um, this was probably three years ago, it was before COVID. And she had taken out almost nine. $900 out of her IRA and paid the taxes and penalties so that she could buy a property um, for an RL business. And I, and my, why didn't you just leave the, why didn't you have the IRA buy the property? Why did you take the, you know, a 35, 40% haircut on that money? She says, well, because IRAs can't own real estate. And I'm going, well, of course they can. She didn't know that. But but again, don't run the business out of it. But it can certainly own the real estate to your or a portion of the real estate. Um, I hope that makes sense. But, but yes. And thank you for your comments. I, I'm reading some of them. Um, I appreciate that. You've already commingled your IRA. Can you un... Um, I, I don't know that one. Um, and then again, I would look at your law and if your state law will, will protect it, then, then I'm not worried about it. Um, if your state law doesn't protect it, then, oh, if you can unwind it. I, I, I have no idea on that one. I'm reading the statutes and I don't know of any cases, um, I I I I simply don't know on that one. Okay, okay. Uh, Jen asked a, a good question here. If I moved my four hundred one k to an IRA, that means I cannot make any additional contributions to IRA to retain that protection. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Now I could have another IRA, but again, I'm I'm reading straight from the statute. There you go, and and that's my interpretation. So. It, it, you can, and if you're in a state that has great protection for your IRA, IRA, don't worry about it. If if your state law is just as good as the ERISA protection, then can continue to contribute. If you live in Minnesota, I'd probably set up another IRA and keep the federal protection strong. Um, that you know from from your ERISA protected plan, you'd still direct it but I wouldn't add money to that. Again, look at your state statutes. Um, that would be, that would be, I don't know, probably what I would recommend. 
Okay, JB asked a good question. Uh, doing RAL in California, if I use a servicing company and split payments, one payment goes to the IRA owning the property, the IRA that pays the mortgage, and the other business account pays employees in an RAL. Is that safe? Not prohibited? That would be a good, I would need to dig into that a little bit more. Um, that'd be a good question. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow on vacation for long, long, long overdue, according to my wife. Um, come back yes. and ask me individually. Get on the beach, Don. This is a good thing for you. Get on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, guess so. Good, good question here, JB. What is, say, for Roth owning the property or a trust? Or is the IRA owning the trust? And the trust or in the IRA for extra protection. Uh, look, as much as I've told you about funky rules and, and other stuff, generally for, for most lawsuits, IRAs and 401ks are very well protected. Look, a judge, if you do something wrong or you're accused of doing something wrong, or I don't know, there's a judgment that comes down against you. Keep in mind that the last thing that a judge is probably going to take away from you is your home and your retirement account. It, it would be very, very uncommon, even in states that have, you know, pretty lousy IRA protection. So generally, across the, the board, we're, we're not really worried about protecting our, our IRAs and 401ks. I've given you some exceptions, but they're but they're rare. Um I, for the most part, what I'm worried about is you blowing up, up from the inside by self-dealing practices, or if you live in or, or rollovers from ERISA protected to non-ERISA. But generally, I, I, what I don't want you to do is leave this, this webinar and think, oh my gosh, everything's in, in turmoil and, and I've, I've created havoc in your life. IRAs and 401ks have really good protection. Um, there are some exceptions and be aware of them. Um, but and unless you, you're accumulating a whole bunch and you're, you know, for, for most normal people, your IRAs are protected up to about a million dollars and just don't blow it up from the inside. Is that Lots Don, of we got on. one more good question here, I think, that we can answer. Her time is kind of getting short there, but it says, yep. well, thanks for the presentation. I want to purchase an REL as a partnership with two other partners. I want yep. to participate in operating the business. So, this, so they want to buy the REL and using funds to purchase the REL, you know, directly from their IRA. Can they still participate in the business? Because that's their only way to fund the business is from their IRA, their IRA. Can they still participate without blowing up the IRA? Remember remember when you're doing an RAL, there are two businesses. One is managing the people, taking care of people, and the other is the real estate business. And if you if the only funds you have are for the or our IRA funds, I would probably go into the real estate business and, and let somebody else manage the people and just you collect the rent. Um, again, I don't want to use IRA funds to run a business, but it could certainly collect rent. Keep in mind that there are significant tax reasons why we're separating the, 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 the management of people from the management of real estate. And remember, you know, I, I've used this example a lot. Every time I teach RAL, look at a Hilton or a Marriott. There's always two businesses. One takes care of people and feeds them and clothes them and, you know, changes the bed sheets. And, but one is in the business of real estate. And they're very, very different. IRAs can invest in real estate. They should not invest in an RAL business. I don't know how to be more clear, but again, if you want... If you want some specifics on this, I'll meet with you individually when I get back from vacation. I'll be gone about 10 days, and then I'm happy to answer questions. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, we're wrapping up here, Don. I think uh, I wanted to point out Jeff's comment here. He says he loves the Total Asset Protection Handbook. Tonight you're covering an important area. Your book's Appendix E has a great list of IRA creditor protection by state. You mentioned that, but Jeff, I'm impressed. 
He knew that right off the bat, Don. Look at that. That's pretty impressive. Well, I mean, you know, most of these funky rules that I, I pulled right out of your, your appendix E out of the textbook. And so, um, so both there's our Jeff, book. Both Gene and, Gene and Jeff are, are scholars. <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah. Okay. So there's an appendix E and it, it's about 12 pages. We go through state, state by state by state. Here's your funky little rule and it's right there in your appendix so yes this has been working on this presentation for a lot of years and, and so we appreciate you being here for the you know the opening of the the, the teaching so um anyway the premier performance whatever you call it um and and that that million dollar limit amir is not per account i'm sorry nice try but it's for all of your accounts and so again look at state laws and and kendall if they wanted to buy the handbook what do they it's on the website right yeah protectwealth.com slash handbook and I, I can put that in there too that's uh, i know we still have a discount on there from one of our last events that i didn't change my fault, but you win if that <laughs> if that's Ooh. the case. It says two hundred ninety-five dollars. That's my fault. Yeah, there's a price. <laughs> yeah, so protectwealth.com/handbook, and that is gonna say it's two hundred ninety-five dollars. It's actually not. It's one hundred and twenty-nine, I believe. Uh, Which Alaska. book? There's the book. Okay, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Protect Wealth Academy. So, and don't buy an, don't go to eBay and find and buy one that was, you know, the the, the seventh edition because it it won't have it in there. It's going to be the tenth or eleventh edition. So yeah. just get the, the 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 most current information. All right. I appreciate it, Kathy. Um, I'm glad this was helpful for you. This, we Again, we put a lot of work in, and, and thought into this. Thank you for your comments. Yep. Where can I find California rules to read? Look at, just Google your California statutes and, and in the, I don't know, in the handbook, call customer service. We'll read you the statute and then you can look it up. Um, <laughs> If you can't find it, you know, or we've got a customer service. We're here, we're here to help you. Okay. Yeah, so we will be uh, sending a recording out tomorrow. So everybody who registers for the webinar uh, will get a recording. Okay. What else are we missing? Well, they're saying have a great vacation, Don. I think you put your feet up, get some pina coladas and relax. That's what I think. Well okay. deserved. Thank you very much for everyone. <laughs> I've enjoyed teaching you. I hope this has been very, very helpful. Um, again, I, I wouldn't stress about your retirement accounts. Just know there's exceptions, and I've tried to clarify those. But but be safe. Build those retirement accounts. If you, um, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Change the beneficiaries when you need to. Um, be good stewards of what you have. We're, we're happy to serve you. Join us when you can at our three-day summits, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.